Before I start the video, thanks a lot for 2 lakh subscribers, it really really means a lot to me. If you haven't pressed the subscribe button yet, make sure you do that for more amazing content. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, I'm Saurav and in this video, let's talk about photographing the Milky Way. So I couldn't shoot anything while I was photographing the Milky Way but I will show you everything right from the camera settings and the planning and also I will give you some tips about photographing the Milky Way that will give you better images. So I'm very pumped up for this video without wasting any time. Let's get started. So first, let's talk about the camera settings. So before starting with the other camera settings, the first thing I would like to clarify is always shoot in RAW. So the images you're going to get will have the details but it won't be visible straight out of the camera. In post-processing you actually have to pull the details from the raw file and the, only the raw file will give you so much details. So make sure you're always shooting in raw when you're photographing some Milky Way or any astrophotography. So now let's talk about the camera settings. Let's talk about the focal length first. So always use the widest focal length that you have. Now I have a reason why I'm saying so. So actually in astrophotography, the focal length is related to the shutter speed. So whatever the focal length is, the shutter speed will be dependent on that. And that brings me to the 500 rule. The 500 rule states that the maximum shutter speed you can keep for getting stars pinpoint sharp and avoiding the star trails is 500 divided by your actual focal length. Now, before I go into the calculations, let me clarify what exactly actual focal length is. So depending on whether you are using a full frame camera, the focal length will be the actual focal length. But if you are using a crop sensor camera, your focal length will be the focal length you are shooting at into the crop factor. So make sure you are calculating that perfectly. And then 500 divided by the focal length will be the maximum shutter speed you can expose your camera for. Like for example, suppose your actual focal length is 50 mm. So 500 divided by 50 mm is 10 seconds. Now why I said that you have to shoot at the widest focal length available? First reason is because if you have a wider focal length, when you divide it by 500, you will get a longer shutter speed. And you want a longer shutter speed just because it's so dark, you want more amount of light hitting the camera sensor to get the details from the Milky Way galaxy. So in this example, I'm shooting at 15 mm. So 500 divided by 15 is approximately closer to 30 seconds. You don't have to be very accurate with it. So with the 500 rule, the shutter speed can be decided. But I would always recommend you to use less than what the 500 rule recommends, okay? If the 500 rule recommends you 30 seconds, use an exposure time of 25 seconds just to be on the safer side and just to get those pinpoint sharp stars. So now let's talk about the aperture. Now since the idea is to get maximum amount of light because it is so dark, you have to use the widest aperture your lens offer. So my lens offers me the widest aperture of f2.8. So whatever widest aperture your lens offers, always use that. Whether it be 3.5 for your kit lens or 1.8 or 2.8 because you want more amount of light hitting the camera sensor. Now let's talk about the ISO. Even though you're using a wider aperture, even though you're exposing your camera for 20 or 30 seconds, it is so dark that you have to raise your ISO to more than 3200 or even 6400. So I would always recommend to start with ISO 3200 and later check the images or the histogram to see what kind of details you're able to capture. If you feel you're getting a good image, stick with ISO 3200 or if you feel you're shooting a darker image, you can shoot at ISO 6400. The tip is don't don't shoot darker images at lower ISO, don't be afraid to increase your ISO and shoot a properly exposed image because that will give you the most optimum quality. Now let's talk about focusing. The question is, sort of if it is so dark, how will I exactly focus? The solution to that is first of course increase your aperture, I mean shoot at a wider aperture, increase your ISO and then use manual focus. So once you are in manual focus, there are two options that you can go with. The first option is like 
take a brighter star which is in your frame and then like focus at infinity. The infinity marking in your lens can be actually wrong sometimes. So make sure you're focusing on the brightest star or otherwise you can always carry a torch with you and place it at a distance and then focus at that light. Even that will give you a sharp infinity focus. So always make sure that the stars is in focus because it would really be very bad that you try so hard for shooting and later when you go home you see the images are actually blurred. Make sure the focus is tacked sharp so that you're getting good details. Now let's talk about the last camera setting and that is the white balance. For shooting Milky Way or any astrophotographs, I generally start with around 3300 Kelvin. But you can also start with a tungsten white balance preset. So the tungsten white balance preset is a very good starting point for shooting astrophotographs. And since you're always shooting in RAW, you have the flexibility of changing the white balance in post-processing. So you can start with the tungsten white balance and later adjust the colors as you want. Now we are done talking about the camera settings. Let's talk about the planning which is also equally important. So camera settings is something you know right? But planning is really really very essential when you want to shoot Milky Way. The first thing is the location. So the location I was shooting is actually away from the city. It was around 3 to 4 hours drive away from the city so that I will get less light pollution. Now you can't see the Milky Way galaxy right from your home just because the light pollution may be too much. So you want to make sure you're going at some place where the light pollution is less and you can see the stars. The next thing you should check is the weather. You don't want a hazy and a cloudy weather because that will actually come in between you and the Milky Way. So make sure you're shooting at a very good and clear weather conditions. You can check your weather conditions at different websites on the internet. The links will be down in the description below. The last thing I check always is the moon phase. So it's always better to shoot during the no moon time because if you have moon in the sky, you won't be able to see the galaxy very clearly and that will come in between your images. So make Make sure you're shooting around the no moon day so that you get the best possible image. So now mostly you're good to go. Let's talk about some additional tips that will be helpful. The first obvious tip is use a good sturdy tripod. You obviously need a good sturdy tripod because you're shooting a longer exposure and you don't want a shaky image just because you didn't have a good tripod. The next thing is use a remote. Now I always suggest using a remote while shooting longer exposures because when you press that shutter button you don't want your camera to shake because of that. It's totally fine if you don't have a remote. You can also set a timer so that the contact between the hands and the camera is not there when the camera starts taking the image. The next thing is turn off any kind of image stabilization that your lens has because since the camera is on a tripod, you don't need any kind of image stabilization interfering. The last tip I would like to give you is carry some additional lights with you because you won't be able to see the camera buttons in the dark and you also want to paint the foreground. And that brings me, okay, let it make it second last. That brings me actually to the last tip that is also very important and that is the composition. Of course the Milky Way is a very important part of the image but also complement it with a good foreground or a good composition. Maybe use something to place it in the rule of thirds and complement that Milky Way. You don't want your Milky Way images looking very normal and cliche. Make it look interesting with some interesting compositions. I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay let's not hope. I know you enjoyed the video. So smash that like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.